press. Our attention was brought to a lady called um, Marios Alexandria Aka Esther. The lady mentioned above appeared in a television news bulletin two days ago and alleged she had been tortured by CMI officers whom she identified as Ali Hassan, who is here, and Elias Sengova, who is here. No evidence was provided by the television station or the complainant that CMI involved her in torture or detention. We have reviewed the grave allegations against the institution of CMI through PDF and established facts as follows. One, we categorically state and impugn the claim that CMI was involved in her torture or detention. She is not known to CMI and has never, in the capital letters, been held in our detention at any one point in time. Two, the two individuals she mentions that allegedly tortured her, Ali Hassan and Elia Sengova, are people she has known for some time. As you heard Elias telling you, they live in the same locality. To start with, Elias Sengova is a civilian and a neighbor to Marion Rosa Alexander, aka Esther, aka Esther. They may have perhaps not be friends, but have known each other for a while. I hope I'm stating right Mr. Sengova. Ali Hassan was involved in interrogating her at Chirika Police Station in 2020 when she was suspected of possession of military stores. This is because her lover, at the time, an LDU soldier, deserted and was suspected he might have left some military stores or equipment in her possession. Nothing incriminating against her was found and she was subsequently released within the next 48 hours. Three, throughout the period minus Alexandra, aka Esther, claims to, she was under detention, phone printouts indicate that she was at her place of abode and continued to make numerous telephone conversations like any other free person enjoying her freedom. Therefore, we are unable to determine at this point in time why this individual came up with such serious claims that are not backed up by any iota of evidence and why the media houses in question found it prudent to publish such serious and unfounded allegations without thorough scrutiny, despite my repeated appeal for them to establish evidence. We are also unable to explain at this point the source of any bodily injuries she may have at the moment, as she claimed. Five, in regards to the complainant, we can only speculate what her motives might have been. A. The government has been consistent in making clear that all victims of torture and those who died or were injured in the violent riots will receive the full course of justice and that they will be compensated. That could be a motivation. The Ministry of Internal Affairs announced recently that these, proce these, processes, these processes are in advanced stages. Could this be a source of motivation for Alexandria in coming up with these base allegations? We can't tell. B. We have witnessed, and most of us must be aware that one of the quickest ways to claim asylum or refugee status in Europe or North America, especially, is to claim persecution at home of, uh, for one reason or any other. Could this be a source of motivation for Alexandria? We don't know, but it has happened before. There is a Ugandan who claimed there were uh, crocodiles with ranks of captain. And when another Ugandan found him in Boston and asked him whether he had ever seen them, he said, Whatever her motivation might be, uh, well, uh, we will continue to review this particular incident until we establish exactly what's happening and the orientations. To reiterate the entire government of Uganda and indeed the commander in chief and the entire UPDF leadership, have been very steadfast in condemning torture and all other acts of degrading and inhuman treatment. <coughs> this position has not changed. Our officers, our officers and militants know and understand this position well. 
where incontrovertible inco evidence is obtained involving one human rights abuse of anybody involving our soldiers, our court martial, our court system has been very effective in meeting out appropriate punishments. In the same breath, we, we call upon the media to always exercise due diligence and the thorough scrutiny because, because publishing damaging but unfounded reports that undermine the good name of the EPDF and the country at large is self-defeating.